So this is the question. It says um, some wire of some given geometry is carrying some amount of current. And there's an overall hint that has your review section. So I'm just going to load that tab in the background. So I have that ready to use. Uh, there are some formulas that you would basically need to look up. Uh, you can reason it through, but uh, that's not <laughs> what you're expected to do. The chapter, the section covers the um, what parameters are used to model conduction and you should look at it. Um, okay, so it asks, uh, what is the number density of charge carriers in the wire? Okay. Um, for a uh, general two for conductors uh which oh yeah so you'd have to um yeah so there are some numbers you can you have to look up uh the main information you have here is that it's an aluminum wire so uh, let me see if uh, the textbook section has uh, something specific for aluminum if not i can run the numbers um so yeah, drift velocity, this is the whole mo uh, conduction model. Um, and then there's the expression that relates current to these parameters. And I'm looking to see if anything in the section will give charge density directly. If not, I'll just use the hint and plug in the numbers. Okay, calculate. Uh, wait, do they have one for, no, that's copper, not aluminum. Uh, all right, it looks like I'll just have to look up some numbers. All right, so the uh, textbook gives me the density of aluminum, okay? And, and the important thing here is where it says, this piece of information here, it's uh, useful. Each atom contributes one free electron. So where it asks for number density of charge carriers, basically asking for number density of atoms, because for each aluminum atom, you associate one charge carrier, one free electron. Uh, it has to do the, some solid state physics stuff that we're not going to get into. Um, but given this information, density of aluminum, and this information, mass of aluminum atom. This is what I hope as you stare at these expressions, you can figure out. So density is given in units of kilogram per cubic meter. Okay. And the mass of an atom is given in terms of kilogram. And as you uh, think through, uh, think through this, um, if you want an expression for the the number density, which is in the unit of one number per cubic meter, that this uh, expression for number density should be the density, mass density, divided by mass of one particle. So, so that's the expression we are working through the numbers too. Oh, and I have a sage math out in case I needed to do any uh, computer algebra stuff. So uh, let me use this as my calculator because it's a lot easier to work with than the scientific calculator in Windows. So the number is uh, 2700 divided by um, 4.48. Oh, I think the E notation here is E minus 26, we'll see. Um, okay, yeah. So the number density of electrons, it's pretty high, 6.03 times 10 to the 28. So 6.03 E28. Yeah, uh, let me submit and see. Good. So yeah, that's uh, the number density of L. It's pretty high. I, I think uh, having intuition for these microscopic numbers, it's difficult. So uh, I'll move on having worked out the correct answer. So that's my N. Um, and it asks, asks, what is the magnitude of drift velocity of the electrons? So this is where you would use the formula from section 9.2. Do I give that in the hint? Oh, yeah, <laughs> I guess I didn't really need to look it up. So it says, yeah, use this equation. And um, so we are given the current way above three ampere. We are given the, uh, or we just worked out the number density. And a Q is the charge of the charge carrier. Um, 
I think I need that number. Um, and uh, A would be the area, cross-sectional area of the wire. So um, let me look up the electron charge. I think, I mean, I think I know what it is. 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, whatever. But I want to be sure. So okay, let me just write that down so that I have the number to refer to as I plug in all the numbers. So 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs is the elementary charge. Okay, I think I have everything. Oh, let me just work this out in um, in Sage Math. So this is how you could uh, organize your plugging in of numbers. So Sage Math expressions have um, um, a syntax for substituting in the numbers. Let me show you. Uh, first thing I need to do is I need to declare all the variables, my current, my number density, my uh, elementary charge, my, now instead of area, I'm going to declare a variable for a diameter. Then the kind of the expression I want for the, the drift velocity would be the current divided by number density times Q times the expression for a cross-sectional area which is pi times diameter divided by two squared. All good so far. Now that doesn't actually plug in any numbers. So what I need to do is I need to build up a dictionary of the, uh, of the numbers I'm gonna plug in. Uh, so let me use my usual variable for the rule, uh, for rules, uh, uh, terminology that comes from math my mathematical days, but not important. Current is a three ampere, and I'm going to keep everything in basic SI unit because that's going to keep things simpler for me. Uh, the number density is uh, 6.03 E28. If I want need a more precision, I can go back up and, uh, oh, I guess I can actually, uh, that's fine. It's, that's precise enough. Uh, Q uh, is going to be my elementary charge, 1.602 E minus 19. Um, and I need the diameter. Okay, I'm going to convert that millimeters into meters as I plug it in. So the diameter should be 0 0.002588 meters. That's 2.588 millimeter. Okay, I think that's uh, all the numbers I need to plug in. So I'm going to go back. So this is the algebraic expression that I want number plugged into. I put parentheses around the whole thing so that um, so this whole thing is a, a an expression object in Sage Math that has a bound method called uh, subs uh, bound to it, and I can substitute in uh, the numbers according to this dictionary. So that's oh wait, let me just put this through. Um, oops. Uh, in defining that n, I think I overrode one of the things. Um, all right, uh, let me just replace pi with uh, 3.14. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's a better way to do it, but this is uh, fine. Um, so this is going to be in basic SI unit. So this should be in meters per second or minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5. So 5.91, 5.91 E minus 5 meter per second. Now, if uh, you see, so this might seem pretty low, and that's typical. Drift velocity is a, a very small number, typically. Uh, the better a uh, conductor uh, something is, the lower uh, drift velocity it has. And um, yeah, this is, um, so it's kind of surprising uh, how small drift velocity is compared to the thermal velocity of the electrons. So we can do this exact same calculation. Oh, so this would be the one of the reasons to do this in Sage Math. It makes it super easy to just uh, swap out the uh, um, swap out the numbers you plug in. So all I have to do, I can take my rule, um, and it's got a bunch of bound method to it. Update is one of them. I can use that to update one of the numbers. So I'm going to update the number n. So my n will be updated with this number. So I have the density of copper, A960 kilogram per cubic meter, uh, divided by 
the mass of a single copper atom, um, 1.0552, and to the minus 25. So that, yeah, that'll give me the number density. And after this update, make sure I have the updated the N. Um, yeah, and just go run this uh, command again. It, it keeps everything the same, just the changes N uh, according to the updated number in loop. So I have uh, minus one, two, three, four, five, four point one nine times ten to the minus five. Four point one nine times ten to the minus five. So yeah. Oh yeah. There's a disconnect between. Um. Yeah. I guess uh you can kind of imagine it this way. Uh, the electrons in a wire. It, uh, it, this is not the best uh, picture, but if you had something solid and when you started pushing on one end of the solid object, then the other end um, almost seems to instantaneously move, even though the speed of each individual piece is kind of relatively low. And um, so with a solid material like this, what limits how quickly signal is transmitted from one end to the other is the speed of sound in the material. And in a wire, what's uh, analogous to speed of sound is um, speed of light, <laughs> speed at which um, electromagnetic signals can be transmitted. So, um, yeah, so for the moment, treat the two as completely unrelated to each other.